Hello ladies and gentlemen, cranial nerve examinations, cranial nerve number one, the olfactory nerve. Uh, exits the brain in the forebrain, just to remind ourselves, forebrain, midbrain, pons and medulla, two, two, four, four. So the olfactory sensory only, it's uh, associated with smell. Just to remind ourselves also, smell uh, is associated with flavour, not taste. So if a patient presents to you suggesting that they have their, their, their food is no longer as flavoursome, as it otherwise would be, you suspect cranial nerve number one, not cranial seven, facial nerve, which has got the anterior aspect of the two thirds for its sensory uh, component. Now, the uh, cranial, <coughs> the olfactory nerve, what we're going to do is ask the patient if, uh, first and foremost, wash their hands, introduce ourselves, tell them what we're going to do. So, hello there, I'm Zahir Abbas, I'm your osteopath for the day. Uh, can I come with your full name and date of birth, follow please? Yeah, Joe Blog, 1192. Uh, Joe, uh, I'm on to Mr. Bob, yeah, Joe. Uh, Joe uh, Mr. Yeah, Wonderful, fine. thank you, Joe. Um, Joe, do you have any issues with your smell at all? No, I don't. Lovely, thank you. Uh, I've been asked uh, by the examiners to uh, examine your sense of smell. Would that okay. be okay with yeah, you? That's fine. What I'm going to do, uh, Joe, is I'm going to actually ask you to close that your eyes during okay. the process, and I'll no talk you through this. Um, and I'm going to place a smell just uh, under your nose, okay. I'm going to ask you to identify. It will be either peppermint oil or coffee beans, no so there's nothing of concern. Is that okay, okay with you? That's fine. Perfect. Wonderful. So we've got the consent from the patient to be very clear with the patient what it is we're going to use, no nasty surprises, and we'll go from here. So Joe, if I may ask you just before we begin, uh, uh, you said you've not had any changes to your smell. I've not, no. Wonderful. And uh, can you just sniff for me please? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Now can you do the same again, except I'd like you to close one nostril and then do that, and then do the other one as well when you're ready. Lovely. And that's me just assessing that uh, both nostrils uh, are open and therefore the sense of smell won't be um, affected, thus giving false positives. Okay Joe, uh, if you're ready, yeah. shall we begin? Yeah, sure. From here. Lovely. So if I may ask you to just close your eyes and as you as this peppermint. Wonderful. Lovely. Can I ask you now to uh, just uh, block one nostril for me please sir? That's lovely. And copy. Lovely. And if you do the other one for me please. Okay, lovely. Peppermint. Wonderful. You can open your eyes. Thank you very much. Joe, um, that's everything, that's all I need you to do. Do you have any questions at all? I don't know. Lovely. So if, um, in the unlikely event, Joe suggested that uh, the, he has had a change in smell, uh, two conditions in which uh, you might consider uh, an increased sense of smell. Uh, in Joe's case, being male, uh, epilepsy is a possibility. If this was a female patient, then it could be epilepsy plus, uh, or, or otherwise, pregnancy. And uh, hi uh, that's hypernosmia. Uh, on, on the other spectrum, on the other end of the uh, spectrum, you've got anosmia or hyponosmia. Now let's always consider basics, uh, a common cold, a viral infection, uh, and then we go into polyps, nasal polyps. Um, and aside from that, then we can go into more sinister causes, and, and, and you're looking at the likes of um, CJD, dementia, or Alzheimer's are uh, a part of this whole process. Not to forget, after 60 years of age, uh, there is a natural loss in uh, the sense of smell uh, that is more so in females than it is in males. I hope this helps. Thank you again, Joe. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Take care.